Today, I'm going to show you how to build this, so you can get this. Pretty cool, huh? All this was shot with this little guy. No extra camera needed, it's under 250 grams, so it's quiet, easy to carry around and less regulated than bigger, heavier drones. You can easily build one yourself with this step-by-step -step build guide. So first, let's see what you need. Even though this is not a budget build, I'm gonna go with the SpeedyB F405 mini stack, which is a relatively cheap but reliable FC-ESC combo. The frame is the Quadmula Gin F25 SP frame. I personally think Quadmula makes some of the highest quality frames out there and this one is no exception. We're gonna rock the new DJI 04 Pro air unit to get the best image quality without the need of an additional action camera but also with its new race mode, a low latency, full HD video link that's great for freestyle. We will be using Express LRS as our radio link. I chose the Happy Model EP1 receiver because it has proven to be very reliable for me and it's both tiny and lightweight. Since this is a 6S build, I'm gonna be using the T Motor F1404 2900 kV motors which I think are the best choice for smaller sub 250 6S builds. Paired with the HQ Prop 4 blades, we get a smooth, not too aggressive flight experience and a really quiet drone. If you mainly want to freestyle, I suggest you go ahead and print this antenna support by Murders FPV. If you want to focus on cinematic long range, you can use the antenna support provided with the Quadmula frame. Other than that, you're gonna need some 16 gauge wire and a XT30 connector. We're gonna talk about batteries later in this video. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna remove the antennas from the air unit so that we can insert our TPU print. Be really careful when opening the lid. There is a ribbon cable connecting the top with the bottom part. So now I'm gonna have to remove some of this tubing in order for the antenna not to stick out as much. This is what it should look like after it's done. And you can see I put some shrink tube on here as well. At this point, I wanted to thank Murders FPV who designed this antenna support. It's free for everyone to download and I highly suggest you go ahead and check out his channel. He's doing some amazing flying on there. Once the antennas are ready, we just pop them in and we make sure that the UFL connectors are facing downwards so they're easier to connect to the air unit. That's what we're doing right now and it makes reconnecting them a whole lot easier. You can really hear a satisfying click once they're in. I closed her up and it's finally time to put the air unit inside the frame. And as you can see, you're gonna end up with a little loop because the antenna is quite long, but everything fits perfectly fine. Get your 04 Pro mount screw pack and screw her on. Now for the camera, we're only gonna need the hardware bag from the camera support. Make sure the DJI logo is not upside down. Okay. 
Okay, Quad Mula provides tons of spare screws with this frame. That's amazing. I'm gonna set the camera angle for this build once it's done to around 25 degrees. For now, we just keep going. Also, I wanted to point out that using the right spacers and a low profile stack is quite important for this build since the maximum height of installation is limited to about 20 millimeters. I'm gonna be using the rubber grommets that came with this PDB stack as well as these 3D printed 2mm thick PETG spacers just to get the right distance and stiffness between the ESC and the flight controller. The frame comes with a lot of additional hardware to mount your stack but I'm not gonna be using that for this build. Alright, so far so good. Now as you can see the camera cable is quite long but we can just loop it and then it's gonna stay right underneath our ESC. So I'm gonna take my ESC right now and just slide it in like this. Now we're gonna put the motors on and we're gonna use the motor screw pack provided with the frame. I suggest you put tape around the arm before you cut the cables or even start soldering just because it makes life a whole lot easier. And I'm gonna solder the cables on like this, which I think is the easiest and it saves you the most weight as well. Here you can see me soldering the second motor. As you can see on the left side, I kept the wires of the first motor a little too long for my likings. It always takes me a couple of tries to get the lengths of the wires just right. Once I positioned the cable, I cut it right above the solder pads and pre-tinned the exposed ends. After that, I just hold the wire right next to the solder pad and start applying some heat. Once it's hot enough, the wire should easily slide into the cutout of the solder pad. Make sure to use sufficient flux, it makes soldering so much easier. Alright, so next up are the battery leads. I'm gonna make them stick out from the side so that we can use the battery strap as a strain relief. I'm gonna solder the ESC first, then cut them to length and then solder the XT30. Okay, so this is looking quite good. Next up is gonna be our capacitor that comes with the frame and we're gonna mount it right here behind the camera. Before you screw on the flight controller, I'm gonna be soldering on the cable for the air unit. I'm only gonna use these four wires because I'm not gonna use the DJI radio link. And we're gonna be soldering them on the 9 volt pad as well as the UR1 on this PDB flight controller. Alright, now I'm gonna twist the cable for the air unit and run it between the ESC and the flight controller. Alright, it's looking quite good. I've got the hex nuts on there and everything is nice and secured. And it's finally time for the last piece of this puzzle, the ELRS receiver. As you can see, the antenna sits nicely in here. And I'm gonna be soldering the receiver to these four pads here, ground, 4.5 volt, TX2 and RX2. And then I'm gonna be shrink tubing the receiver to the air unit's antenna cables.
Now everything is nice and secured. I used some double-sided sticky tape to hold down the receiver and I think it's time to put the top plate on. All right, we finally got our finished build and it's looking pretty good. We got the TPU parts on as well as our battery strap. And I think it's time to plug a battery in for the first time, but not without my trusty smoke stopper, of course. A simple tool that can save you a lot of time and frustration. And I suggest you go ahead and buy one or even make one yourself. They're really simple devices. Okay, let's plug in the battery and hope our bulb won't light up. Brilliant! Now let's get our scale out and talk about batteries. I had to get me another scale because this one maxes out at 200 grams. And I have this 100 gram weight here, which should be fairly accurate to test if we get a somewhat accurate reading on our scales. And as you can see, we're not off by much on both scales. I first got me these 380 milliamp hour batteries because I knew that they would keep me below 250 grams and I have to say, the flight times are not too bad. I get anywhere between 3 and 4.5 and minutes of flight time, depending on how hard I push or if I'm just cruising around exploring new areas. These batteries come in at around 58.1 grams on this one and 58.7 grams on this scale. Now, if we add our finished build with the battery onto this scale, we are gonna get a overload message, but if we move everything over to the other one, we get around 235.1 grams, which is way below our 250 gram goal. Now with these 530 milliamp hour batteries, things are a bit different. They come in at around 74.8 grams on this scale and 75.4 grams on this one. If we now add our build with this battery, we can see that we're slightly above the magic number, 252.2 grams. And that got me thinking what I could do to save some weight. I could remove some TPU parts or redesign them to lose a couple grams, or even use titanium screws to bring the weight down. But all that is quite a lot of work. So what I did, I just took this battery strap I had laying around and replaced it with the original Quadmula strap, which is super high quality, but also quite heavy. So the original strap is around 5 grams, and as you can see, this one is less than half of that. And now, if we put everything on the scale, using the lighter strap with the bigger batteries, we can see that we're clearly below 250 grams, which is just amazing. With these bigger 530 milliamp hour batteries, I get flight times of around four to six and a half minutes. And if that's still not enough for you and staying below 250 grams is not your first priority, you can always get yourself some 650 milliamp hour batteries that should give you even more time in the air. All right, so what else is there to do before you can go out and fly? Just follow these steps. I got a link down in the video description where you can download my Betaflight configuration. Just copy that file onto your Betaflight CLI and this drone, especially with this bigger 530 milliamp battery, is gonna fly great. If you have any more questions, just leave a comment down below. If you liked that video, leave a like. I would greatly appreciate that. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button so I can make more videos like these for you guys. I hope this build brings you as much joy as it does to me. Happy flying!